Hello and welcome to another Earth Dragon Art video. I've just done an audio intro today because this is a video I did um, back in 2016 which was already released as a speed art video and this is just a follow up which is the actual full end-to-end um, -end build. I wasn't originally going to uh, put this one forward because of the quality of the footage and everything else. However, um, as it's Halloween just around the corner, we're in COVID right now, I thought it would be worth just sharing this uh, brief video. And I've tried to tidy up and, and uh, enhance it as much as I can for your enjoyment. So I hope you like this video. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up um, and share it with people that might enjoy this. And if you're new to my channel or you've been around a while, um, don't forget to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it helps support the channel. And it also means that more people that like this kind of content can take part. And do remember to set the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on future videos. I've got some more artwork coming down, down the line. Um, probably will be next year now. Um, and I've got some uh, quite a few Lego builds coming up as well. So anyway, that's enough from me. So enjoy this video. Uh, it's a live stream on Fry of Facebook. And um, yeah, have a good one. And um, happy Halloween to everybody. Bye-bye now. Catch you later. Hello and good evening. Um, sorry I didn't start at five like I planned. Mixture of things, uh, first I lost track of time, so it's my fault, so I apologise for that. Also, I had some technical issues trying to get the, um, the software to play ball, and it was being incredibly, incredibly slow, frustratingly so. Um, I think I've got it going now, so hopefully I'll be able to, um, whoops, Hopefully be able to uh, do part two of the mummy this evening, but we'll see how it goes along. Okay, so um, yesterday I was working on this character. I'm just going to him now. Hopefully, there we go. We're working on this character here, and in fact, actually, I just realised something. Um, Never mind, it's fine, I'll, I'll do it at the end. Um, and this basically was cleaning up some of the areas. Um, I have since gone back into um, Illustrator and refined the lines. So if you look closely, some of the edges that were there yesterday when you was watching the video yesterday, you'll see they've all kind of gone. And it's all nice and smooth. Now my plan tonight is I want to try and paint this guy a bit differently than the other guys. Um, I want to try and do it without the lines and obviously without the little mummy symbol in the background on this particular piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I've created myself a little folder with a, uh, with a little clipping mask on it to hide all this other area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the pyramid. So that's the first thing I'm going to remove and then once I've done that then I can get on with the painting side of it. So let's do that first. So. I'm going to use what's called the polygon lasso, lasso tool. What this does is it allows you to add points in different areas of the picture to select that piece. It just makes it a lot quicker than rubbing it out and erasing it. Ooh. There we go. Okay. So, there we go. Right. Okay, so. I've chosen a colour I think is going to work, but I'm going to just zoom in so you can see the painting as I go along. In fact, I can probably even show you even quicker by... Um... I believe I can inverse the selection.
我要什么？哼 ！I've not seen that before. Okay, it's the it's the it's doing something new. You can see so far what I've been doing. I've basically added some shading to the top of the head here, just to give it some depth. So that's going to carry on for the rest of the picture. And I'm going to try and do it slightly zoomed out so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so let me go back to my brush. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm selecting one area um, I'm expanding the, the paint area so when it, so it fills in only that section it doesn't invade any other places but also it overlaps slightly so hopefully at the end when I remove the black lines it will be a nice clean clean picture of the back okay. so back to my brush I'm going to make it a bit smaller this time because it's um, a tiny little area. I'll skip this one because we've got too much talking in the background. I need to apologise guys, it seems like I'm having major technical difficulties today. Everything's just not... That's kind of been how the day has been actually. The day has been a bit... bit of a, bit of a nightmare day, if I'm honest. The only really good thing about today was um, I got to do a VR experience down in um, uh, Shepherd's Bush area. They had uh, the new PlayStation 2 VR... Um, X uh, expose and I got to play this a game called Battle Battle Zone and oh my goodness it was brilliant I really really loved it absolutely thought it was fantastic right I'm gonna because I've had all the problems I'm gonna change the way I'm doing this I'm gonna just try and go carefully inside these areas just because I don't want to be stuck these little nooks and crannies because it's just on this character there's just too many little areas and a lot of it to be fair a lot by the black anyway so I think for this guy I'm going to stick with my usual way of doing it only because of the amount of little odds and ends Three fifth of the I want to finish off. Yeah, but if you don't have games, if you take a virtuality game or any virtuality stuff, definitely have a look. It's just unbelievable. It really is completely amazing. It harps back to um, the old Lawnmower Man days. When that film was out. Yeah, this was proved to be a bit tricky. I'm probably to be fair, I'm probably not gonna finish this guy tonight. <coughs> <coughs> Only because there's so much there's so many bandages which makes it every little area is tough to get to. In fact, let me do it. Let me make this simple. Let me try and I'm gonna try and do this really quick. That's the other thing I need to work on as well. Is just trying to make these 
painting and all these little bits really quick. I think to my own detriment, I can sometimes be so um, much of a perfectionist by, by nature that I want everything to look right and everything else. And that also means I do think I can be too slow with stuff. Now, art isn't really about speed, it isn't about doing it quickly. But I think with the amount of things that I'm doing and the amount of things I've got in my mind that I want to do and create, speed. I do need to look, work on, on doing things much, much, much faster. But at the same time, still keeping. But, um, but yeah, I want to learn how, I really need to learn how to, um, what's the word here? <clears throat> to do these things much, much more expediently, while still keeping the accuracy. Because there's no real reason for them to be slow. I was watching, um, I don't know if you know Bob Ross, but he's an American painter, an American painter. Um, got a bit of a reputation for talking to himself. <coughs> kind of what I'm doing right now, but, um, but I'm kind of talking to you a little bit than anyone that's watching these videos. But he's an amazing, amazing painter, and painting's never been something I like, I'll be honest. The I've never found the patience for painting, but the way in which he crafts a picture and the speed in which he does it, and it's not that he's doing it fast, it's just that the techniques he's using are so easy, it's, you know, it still takes a bit of effort and a bit of skill to get it the way it looks, but they're so, so easy and quick, you know, in the space of 20 minutes he's got a full picture, he's got a full painting, with trees, mountains, lakes, everything I'm like, and that's just a short 20 minute video and it's and I spend all this time like getting all these little tweaks and I've got to get this bit right and I've got to get my thing right but I spend too much time and it goes Areas. I don't need it. Why? I don't. I don't need to spend investing the amount of time I do put into these things. You know, I can just add a, simply add a blur to it, and that in itself will just fill those gaps. I don't even need to. I don't even need to worry too much about getting it 100% right. It's about, I suppose the point I'm making is, is it's about getting the effect that you're looking for. That's really what you're going for. It's not about the intricate details. It's about getting the look you're going for. Now, I think if I'm illustrating, I'm just doing black and white, then there is a difference with that because there's, you can't get around it. You have to draw the individual bits. But even then, you can still, there's still a way in which you can mix them together so that it, it's a nice smooth image and I need to learn to stop being so finicky about all the little nooks and crannies and just just get it done just really the effect you no matter how much you know depth is in there And that's going to be for the most, the most obvious reason is that the eyes are going to get done differently anyway. I need to do the eyes separate to the separate colour scheme. But I think to be fair, to, um, face, uh, YouTube have got themselves into a bit of a bind at the minute because um, there's a lot of um, professional YouTube, YouTube streamers who are being demonetized because of their new uh, 
screening, sorry, new video policies in terms of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? In terms of their content, so they can't do certain things, they can't, terrorism and all this kind of stuff but you don't have one of the things that it was a freedom of speech being stopped. So there's a little bit of down or whatever so I don't know it's definitely making me think of that issue that they're losing they're losing some of their popularity because people are backing out and and being stopped on their channels because I've heard of channels actually being stopped well, stopped in terms of the monetization side of it because they are having an opinion about something related to what's in the news or what's going on around. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the, what the deal is there, but you know. Try to do here is try to get some um, definitions. You got a bit of free, a bit more of a 3D element to this. It obviously says to the consoles over his face. I don't like the way that shading is. I'm going to finish this head off and then rest on the rest because I want to, as I said, I want to try and do this quicker so I think I need to experiment a little bit and see if I can find a, a quicker way of doing this instead of it taking, you know, all, all day and all night to do it. I want to be a, because I'd like to have this guy up if, by tonight if I can. And I just anticipate it taking a little a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Good news is the stream seems to be holding up, so that's good, that's a good start. I'm going to rotate it slightly for that chin bit. I think what would be good is to find um, if I a CD that I can just play with all tunes that are royalty free. If I'm going to skip adverts every time. Just surprised that there's so many adverts tonight. It's just. Even TV doesn't have that many adverts, it's, you have a little break and then it goes into it, but this seems to be every single video has an advert straight after it, which is a bit irritating. Maybe that's the way the channel set it up now, maybe they've been demonetized as well. 
Yeah, I think it's pretty bad. Because I understand that they need to obviously regulate and they need to have um, their policies in place to stop extremism and this kind of stuff. And, you know, and obviously cyberbullying, which has become a real thing at the moment, as you probably read in papers and things like that. It's a major, major thing. Um, and it's not, not good. There was even a channel um, I made a, um, where the guy, uh, without doing too much, he was doing um, a project and it was very clear in the video, that although he, you know, he tried to make a video of professionals for that, it was obviously very close to his heart and you know you could, you got the sense that the guy was getting very emotional and almost to the point of you know tears and stuff like that and then you had some silly person, I'm um, using the word very lightly, who thought it was funny to make a jibe at it, make a big joke about it. And, I can't remember exactly what he said or whatever, but I thought it was definitely out of place and I wasn't the only person that felt that way. And um, so I made a comment, well someone made a comment and I replied to that comment. And the attitude that I got back was, was a sense of, well, oh, how, how have you used the internet? This is the internet, you know, these things happen. It's fine because it's the internet. And the teacher basically justifying it. They were saying nothing wrong with it. I'm sorry, there was everything wrong with that. You know, it was, it was to do with a you know a pet because the guy had, has had a dog who died recently, and he had a cat that was um, that, that he'd had for years that was you know going through a time where they thought the cat was actually going to pass away as well. So it was, a, it was quite traumatic. So for someone to make a comment like that and think that because it's the internet, it's okay to be that insensitive, it was crazy. And and this guy's response was like, a, you know, how can I put it? How can I put it? Um, I'll try to find the words. It was like, why are you being offended? Why are you offended? It was a joke, it was this, it was like, it was a bad joke. It was a joke that's out of place. It was that kind of a joke. Did the video, and it is out there, it's on, it, there is a video, and you can see it. You know, he's someone that can take a joke, and he, you know, he is a bit of a, He's a teenager in the way he wrote it. But I can't help though, that that attitude was so wrong. And it was so out of place. So, so out of place. And I never replied to that because I thought, you know, I'm, I don't want to get into a big argument with this guy who clearly needs to look, needs to grow up a little bit and start, res start respecting people's feelings and things like that and stop being stupid. And I think this is what one of the things that um, your, uh, sorry, YouTube is trying to stamp out is all of this cyberbullying stuff, and but they're demonetizing people because of it, and I think that's not really the right way to go. Obviously, you need to, you know, stop people from being stupid and treating things as like it's a free. Way. If you spoke to people like that and was to make that kind of a joke, unless you knew that person personally, you are going to get a punch in the face by that person because it's just out of order. But because it's the internet, suddenly, oh, yeah, that's, that's acceptable and it's not. What YouTube has done is they've taken that to another extreme and being like, oh no, you can't do that. It's almost like um, political correctness that, that's been going on and that's just gotten really out of hand. That's my opinion anyway, obviously it's not my opinion, but... It's just interesting what YouTube has done. Right, now sorry I'm taking so long on this particular piece. I am going to change the way I'm doing this, like I said. So let me zoom out a second. So this is what it looks at the moment. 
Now I'm going to blur this a little bit, but I think that's what I'm going to do with the rest of it. Rather than spending ages and ages and ages trying to refine it, Just going to paint every area there. I'm just going to do next to experiment. It's okay. I'm good. Let's go. Um, If you can see that, you just click OK. All I did was a bit of a brush and a blur, and already I've got effect I need. That's that's as much. So I don't really need to do as much detailing as I think I do. I can just do that. So I'm going to carry on with that, not because I want to be lazy. It's just because I want to get the effect without going without spending forever painting all these individual spaces. So that's what I'm going to go forward. So let me go back to my brush. Is it, to be fair, this is probably what E1 does on his. Because he has a, he does something similar on his, um, on his channel, on his Twitch channel. I wonder if this is what he's doing. But what I want to do though going forward is so I do want to learn how to paint in a different way and get a real sense of thing as well is I'm making I'm trying to make a, myself aware that there is going to be um, some moonlight on it so the moon's going to come from the back on his back so I'm trying to keep keep that in mind as well with this and I'm even going to try and blur in some other shades just to see how it's going to look let me in fact let me try that now let me do this back bit first Because I think it'd be good to have a double shade, but it might not need it. Wow, no adverts this time. project <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I, I appreciate that you have to advert, advertise and that's fine, I'm not against advertisements because I mean every business regardless of whether it's you know, heavy marketing or not, it's all about promoting your company and I, I get that and these YouTube channels are paid by these sort of people but when, it, when it's every single video, it's tricky. Okay. Now this is going to be experimental here, um, I'm going to do the filter, okay, so I've got my filter there. And I'm going to try to put another colour, just to see, I just want to experiment to see how it's going to look. 
with a slightly lighter colour underneath it. Is it going to kill it? Is it going to be okay? This is on another layer, so it's not going to affect the hunt. Is it on another layer? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's on another layer, so it's not going to affect the one I've done before. This way, this is why layers is really good because it allows you to to play around with something. Now, to be honest, that looks like the same colour. So let me come out of that. Let me get rid of those. So I don't want the same colour. I want it to be a different colour. Or at least a different shade of that colour. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go. And let's just go to these two areas here. And let's see. And then, sorry, let's add the blur. I'm going to keep the same level of blur. Hmm. Let's see, does that look good or bad? Hmm. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold that one for a minute. I'm going to carry on with the one the colour bun and then go back over it because it does give it a sort of a mustier it mustier feel so we'll see how we get on okay so this is the layer we're doing put another one there right right YouTube's behaving itself now it's obviously heard me moaning <laughs> okay bits I'm going to leave at this stage are the bones. I'm not going to colour in the bones just yet because I want that to be more of a yellowy, white, yellowy white. And this is cut, <coughs> which is interesting because um, bandages and bones, at least they're not that far apart in terms of colour. At least I don't think so anyway. The reason why I want to do that is because I want it to stand out because if everything's all the same colour it's going to be very boring whereas with all the other characters I've done whether it be Jack-o'-lantern, the bat, the werewolf, um, the go even the ghost for that matter there's been enough variance of colour to make it interesting to make it you know give it some depth but with this one just basically bandages are all the same. There's no glow on the, on on a mummy. The mummies do not glow at night time. They don't have. Um, it's just it's just basically the same bandage covered over and over and over again. Ghosts can be ghosts can be see through. Um, yeah, there's a lot of little things that elements to consider with that. But with this guy. There's not a lot of variance in colour, at least I, that I can think of. I mean, yes, I could have different colour bandages, but then I think that would look a bit silly if it's all, all the bandages are different colour. And I think also with the ghost as well, um, because of his shape, it's very rounded, so I can get I can get the roundness on the shape. But again, with this. not a lot of roundness you can really show because bandages don't they don't have a shine on them they don't have they're not glossy it's very limited which is why I want to colour the bones differently and make them separate the one thing I did do though is when I did this picture is um I tried to incorporate the, the major shading early on. So 
So, because you, you might notice there's a lot of big black areas on the here. A lot, a lot of black, bigger uh, black areas. And that was because I was trying to incorporate the fact that each piece of wrapping is on a, you know, is on a different layer. In a way, it represents, the mummy kind of represents, represents the Photoshop because that's layers as well. Because every piece of bandage is, a lay, is laid on top of another piece of bandage. And it's a layer after layer after layer. And so I've tried to incorporate the, the shading of the bandages to indicate that they are on, on top of each other before painting the units in, which is why there's, there's so little, even though it's complicated and, and there's a lot of detail on it in this picture, it's not as much as it would have been if I hadn't put any shading at all. Because if I hadn't done that, I would have had to put all the, all the dark areas and all the dark shading and stuff like that. So in a way, I've kind of cut out the middleman, so to speak, in terms of that. But to be fair, I probably, you know, I probably should have just done videos on the actual drawing side of it. Which I have done, but I didn't on this occasion. In fact, saying that, um, I do believe I did the bat on Periscope. And then I posted it on Facebook, I think. Or at least I linked it. As you can see, we're, we're now on the leg area. trying to avoid not painting the, the bones themselves because they are going to stand out so they're going to be more of a whitish a much more whiter yellow than this one and this is still kind of a yellowy white but i well, kind of come for more of a sand faded sand feel In fact, I think there's a program on soon about the mummy actually, or it was on yesterday. And I saw a post uh, in the TV, the TV Times that the guys that do the Downton Abbey are doing something Curse of the Mummy. I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't know if that's just um, a period drama based on the mummy, but if that's the case, that might be quite interesting. I watched the Jekyll and Hyde one they did a while ago and it's a shame because it was so, it's been cancelled but it was such a good show, but they cancelled it which is such a pity, it was an amazing programme and oddly enough they were saying it was too scary for kids and stuff like that and it was like, well first of all it's Jekyll and Hyde, <laughs> you know, so it's going to be scary and secondly you've got the likes of Doctor Who that kids watch all the time and that's quite scary. And yet, they're, they're making a complaint about Jekyll and Hyde because it was too scary. If you've actually watched it, it wasn't that It was scary, but it wasn't gory or graphic or anything like that. Or at least not as much as they're trying to make out. And I think it was just... I think it was that that put people off. And I, just found it was, I thought it was such a shame because it was such an amazing show. And it had so much potential. And then, before you know it, it's already finished. And I, really disappointing you know well you never know maybe Amazon Prime Prime will take it on board because I know they took on board the um, Ripper Street which I recently got into and apparently they just started showing season five so I'm going to probably watch some of that tonight with season five of Ripper Street but it is a bit graphic it's like CSI in London so to speak to, 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 for want of a better way to um, put it but if you can take it if you can accept the goriness of, of some of the sequences, 
and it's more because it's like um, you know autopsies and stuff like that um, and crime you know especially a, a crime drama set set in the Ripper Street in the Jack the Ripper era um, age um, if you can if you're fine with all that you'll love it absolutely brilliant show I really got into that very quickly I didn't even know about it I just come across it on Amazon and really loved it and apparently um, it was cancelled on BBC but Amazon took it on board and made two more series of it and it's now now finally got its fifth fifth and final season which is a shame but really good show I think what makes it is not even just the, you know the, the, it's not the goriness it's not the the crime drama but it's the fact that the stories are done really well and the acting's the acting's really believable you really get into the characters it's just done so well um, I'm just you know personally very impressed with it and it's also one of those shows that um, that you rarely get into for that you get well sorry that you get into straight away um, there are not a lot of the time, like for example, Stargate, which is another show I like watching, it took me a while to. It took season, you know, a couple of seasons to really get into it. I watched it because I, I like the, the movie and such like that. But as a show, as a TV show, it took me a while to really get into the characters and and who they were and, and how it all came together. And it it took at least three seasons worth before it really became became a thing and um, yeah it just, it just took a while but with Ripper Street I got into it straight away right okay so on the just and merge those two guys together now just looking at this I think that second colour does work actually I think that other colour does make the difference So what I'm going to do is I am going to finish off with that, but I'm going to try and do it at a bit of a distance this time. And I'm not going to do it everywhere. Because I think it does add that little element. Now I know, um, just on a side note, you might notice that the rear end of this chap is kind of a bit standout-ish. It wasn't originally planned that way, but when I saw it, when I came across it and, you know, I thought it was quite funny to keep it in there for add a little bit of humour. And I was thinking of maybe having a subheading put in something like, um, does my mummy look big in this? <laughs> I thought that might be quite a nice... Um, thing to add on there but I don't know what you guys think but that's what I was that I was thinking of <clears throat> so I'm not gonna put too much of this this one in because um, I don't want to overpower it so I think this is just gonna add a little bit more of a Well, the, the look I'm going for is it's a mummy. So when they wrap it up, obviously the cloth's all clean and tidy and what have you. But when it gets, a, you know, when it's been in the ground for however long it's been in the ground, it's eventually going to start getting dirty and grimy because it's going to get old and tassy. And I want to try and keep that, get that effect in here. I don't want it to look too clean. And I think adding this extra layer is going to make it less clean because it still looks because at the moment it does look oh I like the effect it does look too clean so at least this way potentially I'm taking away the cleanliness of it giving the impression that he's been wrapped up in this for a few years for a few decades few however whatever okay is there anywhere else I can add a little bit more let's do the face with 
Because we haven't done the face bit. We had, but not. What are we doing anyway? This is quite interesting because I'm seeing something now that another element needs to add. Okay, so we're going to add. Oops, wrong thing. Wrong, 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 wrong. Go back. We need to add some blur again. Let's say I'm, going to, I'm not going to change the levels of the blur just because I think it's it's at the right level. And if I mess mess around too much, it's not going to look so good. Okay, so let's see how he looks so far. Well, so far I think he looks quite good. I think he looks, I think the, the feel of him so far seems to be quite, seems to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, in fact, let me merge these all guys together. Just now one layer. The reason I'm doing merging them together is because it just makes less information when it saves at the end of the image. So I don't have a big massive file that takes up loads of space on my computer which is what I'm trying to avoid. And because it's all the same layer, and it's all the same kind of bits, I can get away with doing that. In fact, looking at this, I think I can add a little bit more of a blur on it. So this time I will increase the level. That's it. Yeah, so it looks nice and grim and dark and everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to add, go to default, I'm going to get my um, blender brush, reduce the opacity to about 50%. I'm just going to, on another layer on top, I'm going to add a little bit of additional shadow. I will blur it, but this is just to, but this is the shadow, not the colour. There's, there's a difference. This is actual shading just to give additional depth to this guy. But again, I will blur it as well, and I will add some dodge later, but I just want to add, particularly, well, you know, around the neck, underneath the face bit, where, where there's areas where it's just in. Just trying to give him a bit more definition. Jump this tune, it's a cool tune, but I don't like the lyrics on it. Good tune, I like it though. So, particularly here where it's all under the arm, under the hands here. Just where it's out of sight. I know obviously I've got a lot of I've got the black background at the moment, so some of this might look like it's just missing and it's all floating in space. But once I add into the main picture, this will all kind of make a bit more sense and it will look more it'll look better. It'll, it'll, it'll just read better. I'm going to add blur onto this as well. I'll do that at the end. Not to mention, I'm going to add the, the good old dodge as well.
so this time I'm, I'm not going to the actual cloth so much but just trying to find where I'm just trying to find where the shading where the things are in the darkness because what this does is it still will keep the colour but it just makes it just makes those colours look a bit darker than they actually are I mean you could say I could do it in the dodge but and technically I could but um, they always add in a little bit of actual shadow I think this helps this is all the learning curve to be honest it's you know I'm still learning how to paint properly and the biggest mistake if you can call it that is the pictures I I actually draw before I put them in here are only A4. This, although I've done this on A3, you know, I've set the actual pace at A3 and I've enlarged this to A3. The actual image is done in A4. It does um, it does seem to make a difference? Okay, right. So uh, let's add the blur. And make the blur not too intense. This is the PT Project B production. Right. Okay. Right, so I'm going to merge these together, and I'm going to, now I'm going to just go back to the top. Those who haven't watched the video, if you haven't watched any of the videos there, the burn tool basically it's like lighting a match to a piece of paper. It's going to make your areas darker because it's literally it's almost like you're burning into the paper. If you think of that pirate ship map, it's probably the best example. You know how the edges of those or treasure maps have a slight um, brownish colour on the on the edges where it's been burned by a by a fire or whatever and then salvaged that's basically what burn does um, dodge is completely the opposite it adds it adds the light where light needs to shine now i'm not going to add light well i'm going to add light on this but not as much because um like i said it's 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 going to it's going to some moonlight on him shade on him so i want to kind of reserve well, I'm going to put some highlights on him. It's going to be the moon that's going to take the you know the majority of it. And that's what we're trying to get. And it doesn't seem to be doing very much, huh? to be honest. didn't look like it was doing anything but it is, it is doing it but it's very subtle
actually show up as doing anything. It doesn't look... It doesn't look as if you make anything darker, which is unusual. sparing with this because I don't want to, I don't want to make him look shiny. And that's, and that's one good thing about the dodge tool is it does it can make things particularly if you're doing metal, it makes things kind of shiny and I try not to overdo it and make him look like he's just one big shiny piece of plastic. I'm going to finish up with him this part very soon, <clears throat> but the one thing I just want to do is I want to get the bones painted before I, before I finish. And because hopefully, because I've done all these guys here, I should be able to colour the bones without affecting the top layer. And I might even try and see if I can sort the eyes out today as well. As I say, I've got some eyes I've already done. That I think would work quite well with him, but I don't know if it's going to play or not. But we'll see. We'll see how it works. Okay. Right. So that's our guy so far. Um, let me just do a quick zoom in. Oh, just doing. It's being a bit slow again. Come on, come on. Because the one I did earlier on was just a test and to practice it. Let me change that back, that background now. We'll change it to. In fact, if I copy this one, move you. And then just change that colour a bit. This is just so I can try and show you. I want to try and so you can see, hopefully see the picture a bit easier. But I don't want to go too dark. see it's just so you can see the image a bit better okay so um he's looking i think he's looking quite good i think he's looking scary enough and i've got the tonality of the cloth right so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a layer underneath underneath the ones i've just been coloring because what i'm going to do is i'm now going to color the bones and so this is going to be the one of the, the semi last thing i'm going to do don't know how this is going to work colorwise but so I'm just going to remove this hide this one for a minute and hide the black. I want to see how see I need that really 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 white. Oh I know why. Uh, there we go to the right brush. So go to my ink ink brush. white. 
Okay, now this is interesting because it's not showing the bones up as well as I would like them. So. I mean, you can see them, but it's not really, really, really clear. You see that? I mean, that's completely white there, but because of the cloth, it doesn't look so good. So, um, I'm going to do something um, hue and saturation. I'm gonna try and see if I can. Change this a little bit. Let me do that a minute. As I say, I want the bones to show. Although it's going to be subtle, I want the bones to at least show out a little bit. And that's actually not a bad colour. In fact, I think that colour fits even better. Let's try a different shade. See, that's just too dark. So I think that lighter colour I think works quite well. Oh no, I kinda like that. Kind of like that. You see now the bones are colour the bones are starting to show out a bit more. Yeah, I think that, that works quite nice. And again it's giving that nice musty feel. So I think I like that. Okay, right, so we're gonna keep that one. Now the one thing I do need to do is I want to make sure that that only applies to that layer. Because what will happen is if, let's say for example, let me just give you an example. If I was to put another colour in here, say a bright red, okay, get my brush out. See how that doesn't show any colour? Because this layer, this, um, I don't know if you, can see, you can't really see it, but this layer is hidden so I need to just make sure on the video that you're going to see you'll see me doing this so that on the other video that when I post it you'll see how I've the, how the layers work but basically oops done that one um, I can apply the hue to just one layer see how the reds now come back in and that's because I've hidden that layer well, that's not a bad effect. I'm going to try something with that actually. I like I like the fact that there is a red there. So I'm going to try something. I don't know how this is going to work. So this is again purely experimental. So I'm going to colour them all in red. Oh wow, that's a really nice effect actually. See, suddenly this is where this is what's called a happy accident. When you do something, you think, well, that's a nice effect. Now obviously he's not, I'm not going to have him red. But look what he's done to his face. So, okay, I'm going to try this. Whether this is going to look good or be, be effective, I have no idea. And you'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. Because it looks like, oh yeah, it's ruined. I do like the effect though. I think, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save this just for fun. Because I just like this effect. I like the way this looks. 
I'm going to turn it to JPEG. Um, just for posterity. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into layers. Now the thing about layers is there's a feature called um, layer masks, or not layer masks, um, layer filters. And you can basically play around with these filters to see how it can mix with the character. See, so, I mean that that one there. This is one. group would allow me to do the same effect. So that was um, colour burn. Right, see now colour burn's given away the, the um, which, which reveal some of the white that's there. Um, okay, so linear burn. Now see screen, don't think you can't probably can't see it, but the screen has given it a bit of a, a slight orange tint to it. That's normal. But screen has given a slight tint. So colour dodge. Uh, dodge. Uh, overlay. Now, here we go. That's it. Can you see how I've now got a sandy colour to it? Now it has hidden some of the some of the white that's there, but I can change that. I can change that. There's a sandy colour. Certainly an option, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with this, but it's certainly a nice effect. Soft light. Soft light's, soft light's quite good as well. Hard light, did that. Vivid. Linear. In. Mix. See, that's not a bad effect either. Actually, I quite like that. It's giving it a bit of a blue glow. Hmm. That's an interesting effect. That's what I think I might stick with this one. I think that's a really good effect. Let's try and see if I can lower the capacity a bit. Yeah, I like that. Although I was going to go for the sandy look, I think I like this one better. It's making because it's still the grey and everything else, but it's also making the Skeletal bones clearer. Okay, right. 
Um, do, do, do. Okay. Right, so one last thing I want to try and do is these eyes. Do you know what? I'm going to do the eyes next time because it's getting late. I've been working this for about an hour or so, so I'm going to call it call it a night there. So basically, what we've done tonight is we've added some shade. In fact, let me make this clear. Make him give him that black again. So basically, we've added some shade onto the different areas of the character. We've added a couple of little filters on there to make sure that to give it a bit more definition and colour. And also it needs to stand out from the rest of it, because at the end of the day he's going to be on, a, on this background. And if he's two the same colour, he's going to blend, he's not going to show out on that. And I think this version of him, I think is going to show quite well. And in fact, let me see. Let me see what he's going to look like. So I'm going to drag him over just to see what he's going to look like. Oops. There we go. Let's give you a bit of a hint of what he's going to look like. I think that works. I don't know about you, but I think that works quite well. I think that's going to look quite good. Because he's he is going to be around in this area here, but he's going to be smaller. But I personally think that looks really, really good. I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. And when I put the moonlight on him, it's going to just add that extra element. So all I'm going to do so what I'm going to do tomorrow is only the eyes that I need to worry about now. Everything else is pretty much done, and possibly a little bit of shade on the bones. Other than that, he's pretty much done. Um, I want to thank anyone that has been watching this video, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it after the fact. But thank you very much for tuning in. And again, thank you very much for your support. I do have um, some videos on my YouTube channel, uh, John Mark John Young, um, ticking a few up for John Young Speed Art. Um, from, and this is all pictures I've done for the Jazza, for the Jazza competitions. So please feel free to check those out. Um, click like and subscribe if you want to see other videos there as in when I um, post them up. With all the videos done so far on Facebook, I will be doing a higher quality of those on fake YouTube as well soon, but I just want to get these characters out of the way first. Um, if I get it done in time before Halloween, I'll post them before Halloween, but they most likely will come out afterwards. But we'll see how it goes. It's all about time, because I just want to focus on getting these remaining, remaining characters done. But again, thank you very much, and um, thanks for your support. Bye-bye. Thank you.